What's up and welcome back to the Design of Steel Structures The Beginner Series. Obviously you heard about this series in our previous announcement video and now you're here to get started on learning how to design steel structures but wait a minute. Before you proceed, make sure you've subscribed to the channel and also remember to leave a like on this video for both me and Engineer Stanford because we are really trying very very hard to make sure that a lot more people get to see these videos and the only way for that to happen is if you leave your like and your comment so that more people get to see these videos thanks to the YouTube algorithm. Now that we have that covered, the next thing is to actually get started with our lesson. Well, the key objective of this series is to import knowledge and skills necessary to at least design a simple steel structure. You know that steel is quite broad and has a lot of checks that need to be satisfied but from our experience we have realized that a true beginner only needs to know some basics preferably using the first principles before you move on to model your designs in Excel or any other fancy computer programs such as Procon, STAD or Tecla. So in essence, it all starts with the basics. To kick start these basics, let's first look at the grades of steel used in the steel design industry. Number 1. You have the grade 43 steel which has a yield strength of about 275 MPa. Then you have grade 50 with a yield stress of 355 MPa. Then last but not least, you have grade 55 with a yield stress of 450 MPa. Well, the most commonly used grades are 43 and 50 because 55 is a bit expensive. But it's, it's important to note that from our experience, and believe me, Stanford has done a lot of these structures. You will use grade 50 when designing to ultimate limit state and you will use grade 43 when you design into serviceability limit state and we will get to talk about this state much later on. But for most of the structures that we are going to design, we will be designing them to the ultimate limit state. So you are most likely going to be using grade 50 so that the structural members you design will not come out excessively big. Because in as much as big is better, so they say. I believe we can all agree aesthetics is much more pleasing than size. We shall have a more of a hands on on this subject when we actually do the design exercise so you that you get to appreciate. Now moving on to the next thing. We need to know the limit states before we actually start designing. Number one, we have the ultimate limit state. This state governs one, the strength. 2. Stability 3. The fracture due to fatigue of your structure So basically, failure occurs if this is exceeded. Next up, you have the serviceability limit state. This governs deflection, vibration, corrosion and durability of the structure. It generally controls the safe use of the structure and doesn't lead to the immediate failure of a structure if it is exceeded. To help visualize this, let's try and think of a simple example. Let's think of a balcony. Say you design your balcony to carry a design load of, using the British codes, 1.4 GK plus 1.6 QK for a maximum of 20 people. If this load is exceeded, maybe say there is a party and so many people come onto the balcony, say 30 people. You know one of those frat parties you had in college where the warden was arguing with his wife and you decided to take advantage of that? In this case, when you have 30 people, more than 20 people, the balcony will fail because it was designed to carry a certain maximum load under the ultimate limit state. But in case of serviceability, the balcony will not fail, but you will see considerable deflections or cracks and imagine if you are living on the ground floor, but the slab starts to bend awkwardly or develops a very big crack. Yes, a big crack, not a butt crack, you dirty minded engineer. It may not actually fail in its design, but 
it will not be safe to use if the serviceability limit state is exceeded. So, for serviceability using the BS or SANS, it's 1.4 GK plus 1.0 QK and the ultimate limit is 1.4 GK plus 1.6 QK. Whatever your code says, but you never go wrong with the British, because I don't know something. May I save you with a couple of tears while well, Master Wayne? No, Alfred. But remember, Batman is the boss. Okay, sorry about that. But the next thing that we really need to look at now is to look at some of the theories. So to look at the theories, we need to look at the theories that we use when designing steel structures. First up, we have elastic theory. Well, st steel structures are basically designed by either elastic or plastic theory. In elastic theory, we are basically designing assuming that a structural element will obey Hooke's law. This is such that when the loads are removed, the element will return to its original state. So in essence, elastic theory of design assumes the structure is loaded with the maximum loads to which it will be subjected during its life. Various load cases are then combined to give you the worst case scenario. And the sections are sized to ensure permissible stresses are not exceeded. The advantage of doing this is quite simple. When you use elastic theory, the analysis is very, very easy. But the disadvantage using elastic theory is that the structural members will be very large. Next up, we need to look at the plastic theory. The plastic theory is based on determining the least load that causes failure. So a steel section subjected to increasing moment behavior results in the formation of what are called plastic hinges, where a section rotates at the plastic moment capacity. We will see more about this when we design. Well, the advantages of the plastic theory are, it results in more economic, economical sections. Sorry about that, tongue twister. Disadvantage, the analysis is tedious. So. We are going to design our structures using both plastic and elastic theories. For example, a portal frame with tapered sections is better designed using elastic theory. You ask me why? Because the moment envelope will be smaller due to the non-prismatic nature. However, ordinary portal frames with eye sections are better designed using the plastic theory Food for thought. Now, some of you may be asking, what about the design variables? Well, I remember a question asked by one member, Max, one of the groups we discussed structural engineering on the spacing of columns in reinforced concrete design. Well, those, thing also, those things also apply here. Column spacing along a portal frame governs the purling size, while the span governs the size of the members and the foundation. That's important to note. Then also, the total loads affect the size of the members and ultimately the moment in the beams and the columns. But it's important to note that we can play around with the column spacing to reduce these effects. All right, so this lesson was a general overview. But next up, in the following lessons and sections, we want to focus more on preliminary design of various steel structures. This is very important so that without you having to look for a template or a previous project, if anyone or your client gives you a span they want for their steel structure, you should be able to give the approximate size of the sections and, you know, up to speed, just give a general, you know, preliminary design, even by a sketch. It's important to those as well who also want to have your certifications with boards such as ISTRACT, ICE or ACI uh, and other international boards. So there you have it guys. This has been an introduction to the design of steel structures brought to you by the Procon Geek in partnership with engineer Stanford Mutemi. If you're new to the channel, please head up to the top, click on the subscribe button. Also remember to leave a like and comment down in the comment box below if you're interested in knowing more about Stanford and steel structures. I'll leave links to his works and his social media so you can say hi to him. So once again, thank you very much for tuning in. Till the next video, stay safe and please don't sneeze. Huh?
Shuri, what do you say? I never sneeze. Achoo! 